Valentine's Day, and welcome to the premiere episode of the One Kind Word podcast. I'm your host, Bruce Wayne McClellan. This is episode number one, Breakfast with Maud. Thank you for joining us today. We are here because we believe that there is a shortage of kindness in the world. You know you're in the right place if you'd like to hear more words of encouragement, empowerment, and hope. And if you would like to improve self-awareness, self-esteem, and self-confidence, this is the place. The One Kind Word podcast will be a weekly variety show with four types of shows, which include 1. Story, Science, and Song, exploring topics pertaining to kindness through stories, research, and original songs. 2. Inspired Interviews, where we will be interviewing leaders of organizations who hold kindness as one of their top values. 3. Conversations on Kindness where we feature people just like you, our listeners' voices expressing their unique thoughts and feelings about kindness. And last but not least, we have Kind on the Ears, Kind on the Heart, where we will be hearing from artists who will use their music as a medium to express kindness. Today we have a story science and song show entitled Breakfast with Maud. This is a story about my earliest mentor, my dad, who modeled kindness in his relationship with my great-grandmother, Maud. We are also sharing with you a kindness tool used by business leaders called Above and Below the Line to create connection with their employees. I believe this tool may be interesting and useful for all of us. Today's original song is homemade with natural organic pesticide-free ingredients just for you. I call it Shine On Kindness Song. I hope you enjoy today's show. Breakfast with Maud. Wayne Dyer once expressed this eternal wisdom. When you have the choice between being right and being kind, just choose kind. But it was my earliest mentor, my dad, who first inspired me to be kind. As with many great mentors, he did so by being a good role model. In Breakfast with Maud, he models kindness in his relationship with my great-grandmother. Maud Barrows McClellan, my great-grandmother, was born in 1884, just 20 years after President Abraham Lincoln was assassinated. She lived through the invention of the light bulb, the television, and the atomic bomb. She survived the Great Depression, World War I, World War II, the Korean War, the Vietnam War, the Cold War, and Beirut. As a spry 85-year-old, she witnessed Apollo 11's historic lunar landing. She was also present for the birth of personal computers, the internet, and mobile phones. She was also present for the birth of my grandfather, my father, and myself. One early morning in 1968, I was riding shotgun in my dad's pickup truck. We planned to swing by Great Grammys for breakfast along the way to a roofing job. Speaking loudly over the country western music on the radio, Dad exclaimed, Son, as I awakened from my early morning fog, he continued, No matter what condition the food is in, son, be sure to enjoy it as though it were the best meal you ever had. My teenage brain was still half asleep so I did not initially get his full meaning. We entered her apartment into the sound and smell of an old-time coffee percolator. She was waiting excitedly for the men to arrive so that she could serve breakfast. The wafting fragrance of burnt toast and scorched eggs soon filled the tiny apartment. Suddenly, the full meaning of Dad's advice hit me like a wrecking ball. We exchanged a brief, knowing glance. I had never seen her so jubilant. She was giggling and carrying on as she watched us enjoy the meal. I was so glad that Dad had shared his wisdom on the ride over. Enjoy it as though it were the best meal you ever had. So, despite the condition of the food, that is exactly what we did. We chimed together nearly in unison. Mmm, Grammy, this is good. 
and we tempered our enthusiasm to avoid an invitation for second helpings. Finally, we washed down that breakfast with the strongest coffee I can ever remember passing through these weather-worn lips. I could easily say that I had sufficient carbon intake that morning to last a lifetime, and that coffee could probably have been used to tan deer hide. Regardless, that morning remains a precious memory for everyone in attendance. Maud passed from this life in 1986. Astoundingly, she lived to be 102 years old. I am a better person for having known you, Grammy. I confess that nowadays I prefer my toast charred and my coffee strong. But I'll kindly pass on the burnt eggs if you don't mind. My blue-collar dad taught me how to swing an axe, walk silently through a forest, and how to work hard. And... It was my dad, my earliest mentor, who first inspired me to be kind. But until this moment, I do not believe I have fully appreciated its importance. What I gain by being right is a point on the scoreboard at an away game, where my arrogance sits high in the bleachers, cheering annoyingly loud. What I gain by being kind is the most cherished commodity in the entire universe. Human connection. I have brought this lesson here with me today to share with you good people as the remarkable leftovers from Breakfast with Maud. Above the tree line, ascending into the realm of the heroes. To rise above the tree line is to go above thought and after the descent back into bird song, bog, orchids, willows, and firs is to sink into the preliterate part of ourselves. Gretel Ehrlich. In this exploration of the business leader's tool called Above the Line, what I will refer to as the ABL barometer, we will seek to better understand that inner hero, the best part of ourselves. The ABL barometer is a tool originally developed for business leaders to help raise their awareness of their own mindset, their thoughts, beliefs, and attitudes. Possessing that awareness, the leader is completely empowered to select a mindset that matches the situation at hand. It helps leaders connect with employees and it allows them to inspire others with more intention, clarity, and elegance. Although the ABL barometer was originally developed for leaders, I encourage everyone I meet to take advantage of its subtle power. Using the ABL barometer begins with an awareness of exactly where I am in regards to an imaginary line. In your mind's eye, picture a horizontal line that travels left and right as far as the eye can see. Above that imaginary line is where the mindset of the inner hero, the best version of us, resides. Below the line is where the mindset of the victim, the worst part of us, resides. On a good day, we tend to live above the line resting in the hero's realm. And on a bad day, we tend to move into the victim's realm. We all tend to travel above and below the line throughout the normal course of any day. The ABL imaginary line allows us to assess where our mindset is residing so that we may return to our home position if we have strayed too far below. Let us take a moment to explore in a little more detail how each of those mindsets, the one for the hero and the one for the victim, may appear. My two mindsets. When my mindset is above the line, expressing the inner hero, I feel open, curious, and committed to learning. When my mindset is above the line, expressing the inner hero, I feel open, curious, and committed to learning. 
If my mindset is below the line, expressing the inner victim, I feel closed, defensive, and committed to being right. The hero's mindset above the line. Open, curious, and committed to learning. Open implies both open-minded and open-hearted. Open-hearted indicates that I value my relationship with the person in front of me. Open-minded means I am willing to hear their opinions, even if their opinions may be different than mine. When I am home, above the line, my mind and my heart are open. As I express the inner hero above the line, I experience openness. Curiosity is a positive emotion. It indicates an eagerness to know. When I am curious, I am engaged and leaning into a conversation. And I listen to others because I am interested in the person and my connection with them, even if I am not necessarily interested in their topic. I listen even if the person in front of me has a significantly different worldview from my own. Curiosity infers the hope that there is something of value to be gained by listening. When I am residing at my inner hero's home above the line, I remain curious. Committed to learning. Committed to learning suggests that we actively engage in the attitude that maybe I can learn something here. And more importantly, I am steadfastly invested in the notion that I can learn something in every situation and from every single person. Openness and curiosity are necessary prerequisites for our commitment to learning. When I take on the hero's mindset and choose to live above the line, I remain committed to learning. The inner victim's mindset below the line, closed, defensive, and committed to being right. One of the main symptoms when I am below the line is that I am closed. Closed in this context means I have closed my mind and closed my heart. A closed heart means I do not care about the person in front of me and therefore it means I also do not care about their ideas. A closed mind tells the story that your lips may be moving but I will not hear you because I choose not to. In other words, even if the sound of your words are touching my ears, I will not allow them to enter into my brain. This is an expression of intentional disrespect, which promotes disconnection. When I choose the mindset of a victim below the line, I am closed. Being defensive means that I am protecting something, usually my ego, the victim of this story. I am protecting the certainty of my worldview from the disruption of a different worldview. This relates to the strong need to appear to be correct by standing on a superior rational and or moral higher ground. When I live in the home of a victim below the line, I am defensive. Committed to being right is the stance that we take in that defensive mode. When I am committed to being right, I will adamantly defend the imaginary turf of my worldview as if my life depends upon it. I must be right because if I am wrong, everything I stand for is at risk of collapse. If I am wrong, I fear that I may lose my value and my significance in my world, which of course is a lie. We all possess an inherent value just because we exist. And we are significant because we are alive. Nothing else is needed for our value or our significance. When I wear the clothing of a victim, as I am below the line, I am committed to being right. To join or not to join. Many people have asked, if someone else is below the line, Shouldn't I join them in order to defend myself? The 14th Dalai Lama is clear on this and advises, Do not let the behavior of others destroy your inner peace. 
I completely agree. Remember, what we gain by being right, aka going below the line, is a point on the scoreboard at an away game where my arrogance is sitting high in the bleachers cheering annoyingly loud. In other words, we all lose the moment we step below the line and choose being right instead of being kind. I do not believe it is in anyone's best interest that we join someone below the line. So, when should we join them below the line? Never. Sustaining the inner hero. As human beings, we are constantly and randomly straying above and then below the line. When our outer world or our inner world challenges us, we slide below the line. In other words, when our loved ones, job, health, the weather, a.k.a. our outer world, disappoints us, or when our emotions, thoughts, or attitudes, a.k.a. our inner world, overwhelms us, we tend to take on the victim's mindset. Emphatically, I believe that it is critical for all of us to pay diligent attention to and remain mindful of our mindset at all times. And when we find that we have strayed a field, gone below the line, we must immediately return straight home and get back above the line as quickly as humanly possible. There are few life practices more important as this one. Throughout this program, we will introduce practices to help you sustain the inner hero and stay above the line. This important practice begins with a simple question. What is the first step for getting above the line? Here's the answer. The first step for getting above the line is awareness. It is simply paying attention to our emotions and thoughts. I remind myself with the phrase, be mindful of your mindset. We must first be aware of whether we are above or we are below the line. We can ask ourselves questions like, am I feeling open, curious, and committed to learning? Many of us will intuitively understand the importance of staying above the line, yet some of us may remain skeptical as to its importance. I totally understand. For the skeptics, we plan to share science-based research supporting this deep conviction. We will save that exploration for a future episode. Until then, remember to savor the remarkable leftovers from Breakfast with Maud. Remember the importance of kindness. Remember to stay above the line. And most of all, remember to be mindful of your mindset. Well, I may never pass this way again.
That is all for today, folks. I hope you enjoyed today's One Kind Word podcast. Please let us know what you think. Please like our Facebook page, One Kind Word Podcast. We would love to hear from you. Next time on the One Kind Word Podcast, we will be sharing an inspired interview called One Sweet Moment with leadership coach Bob Fries. This is an inspired story of kindness arising out of the darkness of 9-11 that intertwines Newfoundland-styled hospitality with an international hit musical production and gifts of chocolate. Don't miss this one. Never doubt your value, my friend. You are one of a kind. And always remember, I honor the best of who you are and the best of who you may become. See you next time.